Hey everybody, guess what? Today I'm coming to you, not from the kitchen, but outside in front of my garage. Why? Because today I want to share with you a few of the techniques that I utilize to make my garage comfortable enough to enjoy year round. Before I tell you about the few tips, I know you're wondering, hey Daryl, what are you drinking today? Well, it's early in the day, so I just got coffee, all right? Now, to my longtime subscribers, I love you. Thank you so much for your support. To my new subscribers, welcome to the family. I'm so glad that you decided to click that button and join. Now, without any further ado, let me show you a few uh, tips and techniques that I use. Keep in mind though, this is these are just things that I do. If they work for you, that's great. If you've got some other techniques that you utilize, share them with the group down in the comment section. And if there's something I'm sharing that doesn't work for you, just let it go. But again, without any further ado, I wanna show you a few things that I do so that I can enjoy my garage year round. Folks, all right, take a look at my garage from a distance. Notice anything unusual about it? If not, let me show you. The first thing I want you to notice, and this is tip number one, by the way, is the screen. See the screen that I have up there? That screen allows me to enjoy this garage all summer without pesky flying critters. It's cheap. I got it for barely a hundred dollars and it's easy to let down and it's easy to pull up. One other thing about this uh, screen, as you can see, you do not have to let the screen up. Well, you don't see it yet, but I'll show you in a moment. You do not have to let the screen up in order to open and close your garage door, nor do you have to take the screen down in the winter. Once you put it up, you can literally leave it up year round. Now, let me show you how simple it is to attach this and then I'll unravel it so you can see how easy and quickly you can let it down when you want to enjoy your garage. So take a walk with me, folks. Notice the screen. Okay. This screen is 16 by eight. Get whatever screen fits your size garage. Now notice here how easy it is to attach. All you do is a couple of things. Here I have staples. As you can see, you have a staple there and I put a knot, a knot in the staple and you do that all uh, down your garage. Of course, the screen comes with instructions. And then one other thing I want you to note here, there is Velcro that comes with the screen. You attach that up here and then you simply stick the screen to the Velcro and do not worry about the screen coming down because it won't. And then you tie it off here. See, you have to tie off here. And it's very easy to let it up and let it down. You can do it literally in about a minute, maybe a minute and a half when you um, adjust the bottom so that it lays completely flat. It is weighted, by the way. You can put either a PVC pole in the bottom, there's an opening for it, or you can put a piece of conduit. That is the weight that'll help keep the screen hanging down. Now. One other thing that we're not gonna talk about today, but I wanna point out to you because I'm about sharing my tips with you. You notice that right here? This is a sensor that I installed outside so that I no longer have to worry about adjusting my lights um, as the seasons change so that they come on, come on and, and go off. This thing was very easy. It took me a little longer because I was smoking the stogie and goofing off, but I did this and you can too. See how neat that installation is? But that's not what I wanna focus on so much today. Uh, we're gonna focus on the tips that make the garage comfortable. So as I said again, tip number one is to get yourself a screen. They are found everywhere. You can get them on eBay. You can get them at Menards. You can get them at Home Depot. You can get them at Amazon. I have had this one up here for three years. Okay, so they do last as long as you let them up and take them down uh, in a uh, responsible way. I wanna show you all how easy it is to let this screen down and to let your garage door up and down without having to con constantly adjust the screen. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let the garage door up so you can see how easily um, it is to leave your screen there. See that? Notice that, and then I'll let it down again. Okay. 
So you can see that you don't have to worry about letting the screen up or adjusting it in order to get in and out of your garage. And now folks, I'm gonna show you how easy it is to let this screen down. Let's let the door first, and then I'll go in and I'll show you how and how quickly I can let the screen down when I wanna enjoy myself outside. So if you swing around, folks, you see here, you simply, you simply uh, unravel it. let it down and I'm gonna go inside for this it's been up all winter by the way but it comes straight down ordinarily I wouldn't have to touch it at all but this is the first time I've let it down in about four months and then you take a moment and you adjust it at the bottom good to go. Notice folks how it looks after when it's all down it's nice and neat and you don't have to worry about the bugs getting in. Getting in. There is one thing I want to show you that's a little different from what the um, the instruction sheet tells you. So you put your velcro here at the top. Uh, see if I can pull it down you can see there's velcro there and you attach it. You never ever ever need to adjust this at all unless uh, by some chance your Velcro comes loose. But I want you to notice something here on the side. The instructions tell you to run a uh, line of Velcro backing all down the garage. I did that and what I found was that it was nearly impossible to pull the pull cord and let the screen up. Far too difficult. So here's what I chose to do instead. Look right here. Instead of running Velcro all the way down, I ran Velcro in a couple of spots. Now, if you need to add more, that's fine, but I generally I attach it at the top, and then right here in the center, I'll pull it a little bit where it's nice and taut, and then I press it down, and it stays. And then I have one more piece at the bottom. I do the same thing. I pull it down taut, see, down here, and then I attach it, and it stays. Now, if you want more Velcro, that's fine. Go ahead, and you can have a little more Velcro. Uh, but that's what I chose to do. Now I'm going to show you two other tips here. If you look at the bottom, as I said, this has been up three years. You see that little hole there? You're going to get those. In order to repair this, you simply get one of those cheap, uh, I don't know, three, four dollar screen repair kits and you can fix the hole. No big deal. Now let me show you one other tip right here in the center. Um, Sometimes Velcro pops off. Notice I put just a little tiny nail in there to hold the Velcro down. I did treat this with alcohol before I put it on, but sometimes, again, the Velcro won't stay. So think about just putting a little small nail in there to hold the Velcro, to hold the Velcro um, to the uh, wall there, and you won't have a problem, okay? So that is tip number one. Consider getting yourself a screen. Now on to tip number two. This is what it looks like from the inside when the screen is down. Trust me, in the daytime, despite the sun being out like that, you can't see me inside. You can't see inside the garage uh, very well. If it was nighttime and let's say you're in the garage and you're having a stogie and you've got music going, as long as you turn off all of the lights inside of the garage, folks outside on the street won't be able to see you on the inside. The reason I want you to see this now is because today is the first day of spring. I want to make sure you get your screen now because the weather is going to change very quickly and I want you to be ready when the weather changes to get out and enjoy your garage. I'm going to show you how easy and how it operates when you open and you close the garage. Take a look at this. See that? No issue at all. I'm going to let it up again just so you can see how seamlessly your garage door operates with your screen up. You put it up and you leave it. The only time you need to let this up is when you want to take your vehicle out of the garage. See folks, 
That is all you need to do to get ready to enjoy your garage in the spring, the summer, and the fall. Now, on to tip number two. But before I show you tip number two, guess who came and interrupted my video? Look, look who's here. Look who's here, folks. Come here. Look at this dude. This dude will not shut the heck up and let me record my video. He says, when you're out enjoying the garage, I'm out there, so I'm coming today. All right, so say hello to Bootsy, folks. All right, so on to tip number two. This is one that I absolutely love, and I hope you will, too. Take a look at the ceiling. Notice anything unusual? <laughs> Those are regular household ceiling fans. I found those things at Menards for $24 each. They are, they are rated as whisper quiet and they work perfectly in, well inside of the garage because they're not out in the elements and they are so easy to connect. Now, I've got a caution for you that I'm gonna share with you in just a moment, but I wanna show you how these things operate. So again, when I'm out here in the spring and the summer and it's warm, I turn the fans on so that I get a nice, gentle breeze um, to make the garage more comfortable. The setting that you're currently looking at is the lowest setting, okay? But even if I put it on the highest setting, one of the things you will notice about these fans, especially since they're rated as whisper quiet, you're able to sit outside and enjoy sports, and you're able to sit outside and have a stogie, and the fans will help to dissipate some of the smoke from your cigar. So I sit out here and I enjoy it a lot. But I want to show you how easy it is to connect these fans. Again, these things were only $24 each. So again, in order to get that level of comfort, it's less than 100 bucks. If by chance you have the space in your garage and you want a larger fan that puts out more, that moves more cubic feet of air, Get a larger fan. But for me, I chose one this size because I like the price and I like the fact that they were whisper quiet. Now, let me talk a little bit about connecting them. So, for most of you, you probably have a setup like this, right? Where you simply have your, your box up in the ceiling and you have your light. When you connect those fans, it's no different than you would do if they were inside. This part comes out and make sure you're familiar with working, you're familiar and comfortable working with electricity before you go fooling around with this. But, mo but for many of you, I'm sure you know exactly what I'm talking about. This comes right off, the fan attaches um, right up top. Okay, that's all it takes. Now, here is, here is the caution I wanted to share with you and one thing to keep in mind. Um, for most of you, for your lights, you're gonna have a single uh, wire that comes from your switch here on the wall, that comes from your switch on the wall that turns on the lights. That's the way you would ordinarily operate the lights in your garage. Now, what I did was I added an extra hot wire so that I could operate the fan and the lights independently. So when I come out and if I want the lights on, I simply hit one of my switches. See that? There are many times when I come out, especially when it's dark, where I want the fan on and I do not want the lights on. So I leave the lights off and I simply pull the string when I want the fan on. That's all you need to do. Again, if you don't have that extra wire and you're not familiar with and comfortable working electri with electricity and don't know how to add one, don't try to do it. Um, if you simply want the fan and you can't do that, go ahead and install the fan. And then the only thing you'll have to do is you'll have to add the extra pull cord and flip your switch on and operate them and, and operate them in tandem and then and pull a string to uh, to separate whether you want the lights or the fan on. For me, again, I can leave the fans on all night if I want and not have the light. And whenever there's a need for me to have the light, I simply flip the switch. See that? Lights on, lights off, fans are still operating. This is so incredibly comfortable in the spring, the summer, and the early part of fall. Now, these also work in the winter, and those are gonna be tied in with my tip number three. Okay, on to tip number three. Take a look at the center of the aisle, folks. And as you take a look at that, I'm gonna close the garage door. 
because I want to simulate for you what it's like to be out here when it's chilly outside. See that there? That is a convection heater. This convection heater is puts out 80,000 BTU. One of the things I want you to note about this heater, notice how quiet it is. Notice how quiet it is. I chose this heater because before I got it, I had a torpedo heater. I do not recommend at all that you get a torpedo heater unless your garage is a workshop. But if you like enjoying time out in your garage and you want to be able to enjoy listening to music or watching a television program or just having family and friends around, do not get a torpedo heater because you will not be able to hear yourself think they are just that loud. But notice this convection heater here. This heater was about $80. That's it. It kicks out 80,000 BTU. If you want to heat up your garage, I would say come out and turn this on and let it run for about from anywhere from 15 to 20 to 25 minutes. Your garage will darn near be 90 degrees. It works just that well. This is what I do all winter or whenever it's cold outside. I have that going. I come outside. I have my beverage of choice and I have my stogie and once I get the heater going and I have the fans going it's very comfortable out here I also have my lounge chair that I won't necessarily show you right now but it makes for a very comfortable time out here and this way you never have to worry about having smoke in your house when I'm not having a cigar, I absolutely cannot stand the smell of smoke at all. I never smoke in my home. So again, when I'm in the garage, I can enjoy a stogie. It's comfortable. And the fans keep the air circulating and the convection heater keeps it warm out here. All right, so that is tip number three. Now, on to my next tip. Hey folks, take a look at the wall over there. See that television? Look very carefully at the image quality. I recommend you do the same. If you don't already have a television in your garage and you like enjoying being in your garage, get you a television. What I did was I went to Best Buy and I went to the section where they had TVs on display and I found this one. It has a very, very, very tiny scratch in the screen that you can't, you can never find if you don't know it's there. I was able to negotiate, I think about $200 off of this television. So that's a 40 inch Sony that I got for almost pennies because it was a display uh, model. They did not have the remote for it, nor did they have the bracket. I knew that I was gonna hang it from the ceiling and I did need the bracket. So all of those were points for me in negotiating the price. But aside from the TV, here's another thing that I wanna share with you that is key. Guess what? You see that image quality? That is not cable. That is a regular $20 high def air antenna. You see it up there, folks? Those are everywhere. You can get those at Menards. You can get those at Home Depot. You can get those at Ace Hardware. You can get those at Lowe's. Anywhere. They're very cheap. It's a cheap RCA antenna. And you don't have to put it on the outside because, again, look at the antenna there. Look at the image quality. In a moment, I want you to see what the uh, race that I'm watching today, I want you to see the quality of the race. But that's my tip number four. If you wanted television in your garage and you thought that it would be cumbersome uh, or you need to have cable out there, you don't. With here, you get all of your local channels and you also get probably about 40 or 45 other air channels that have all sorts of other content that I think will be fine for you if you're simply in the garage and you want some sound, okay? So that is tip number four. Those are the tips and techniques that I utilize to make my garage comfortable all year round. Those are things that work for me. I hope I inspired you to consider doing something with your space to make your garage comfortable for you. So now I have my um, Amazon Prime, I've got my Netflix, and I've got my air antenna. 
so that me and Bootsy can sit out here when I have my stogie of choice and my beverage of choice. By the way, if you're already a subscriber, again, I thank you. If you still haven't yet subscribed, please consider subscribing to the channel. If there's a topic you want me to cover that's home related, that's about making your home uh, more comfortable or cooking, let me know in the comment section and I'll try and uh, see if I can't uh, address that, right? Um, I think that's all, folks. I think the video has been long enough. So, Bootsy and I are about to watch this race. We are on lap number 50 of 248. See you guys on the next video. Thank you.